You understand magnetic flux. Imagine rain falling through a ring like this. Right now we get a lot of rain going through it, but as we start tilting the ring, we get less and less rain going through it. Eventually we have no rain going through it when it's vertical like so. So in the case of magnetic field uh, flux, it's going to be magnetic field lines going downwards like this. And if we have a copper loop like this, for example, then we get maximum flux going through it right now. And then, so magnetic flux measures the number of field lines going through an area. And this measured in Weber's with a capital W and a lowercase b like so. And if we start tilting this, obviously we get less magnetic field going through that area. And eventually we have none. Magnetic flux linkage is when you have more than one turn of the coil. So let's say, for example, got three turns of the coil like so. To get the magnetic flux linkage, you simply take the magnetic flux and multiply it by the number of turns. So magnetic flux is given the symbol phi, and here n times phi is the magnetic flux linkage. And that's given the units Weber's turns, sometimes it's just Weber's on its own. So there's an equation to calculate magnetic flux. To understand that equation, you would draw normal like so. And the angle that we'll be using is the angle between the field, the magnetic field that's going downwards in this case, and the normal. Okay, and the magnetic flux density is given, represented by letter B, and that's going downwards right now. And we're not interested in using the whole component of that magnetic flux density. We're only interested in the part that's going perpendicular through the area of the coil. So this part here that's shaded in green. So that means we're going to use cosine. So the magnetic flux, uh, flux which is measured in Weber's, like so, is equal to the magnetic flux density, which is measured, is measured in Tesla's, times the area, which is in this case a circle, so pi r squared, or, or but it doesn't have to be a circle, and that's measured in meters squared, and cosine theta, where theta is the angle between the field line and the normal, which is shown in the diagram. If we've got more than one turn of the coil, then we can calculate the magnetic flux linkage, which is simply the magnetic flux times the number of turns. Okay, so here is the same equation. We've got the magnetic flux linkage in Weber turns, and we've got the same equation, except we've got number of turns of the coil there. Please don't say number of coils, okay? It's number of turns of the coil. An example of how to use the equation here, the diagram shows a coil of diameter of 5 cm with 10 turns. The coil is placed in a magnetic field with a flux density of 20 milliteslas. The angle between the coil and the field is 40 degrees. Calculate the magnetic flux linkage through the coil. So I'm going to use this equation here. So let's start with figuring out the area of the coil first. So pi r squared. So pi times radius. So make sure you divide the diameter by 2 and you turn it into meters and then square it. And that gives us the area. So now let's stop putting the numbers into equations. So my flux density in Tesla's, so 20 times to the power minus 3. Area, which we just calculated, number of turns is 10, cosine 4 degrees. So making sure my calculator on degree mode when I use it like this. And that gives me this flux linkage, and that's going to be in Weber's turns. Is part B of the question state all the angles between 0 and less than 360 degrees where the flux linkage is a minimum so it's basically going to be zero okay so right now this is at 40 degrees but if we had uh, let's sketch out when it's going to be minimum so it's going to be minimum when the one one time is going to be when the loop is like this okay at this point the angle which is between the normal and the field line is 90 degrees so that's one of the points where it's going to be minimum and then when it's pointing the other direction again the magnetic flux linkage uh, is going to be zero there as well at this point is actually 270 degrees because okay, you're measuring between the uh, the field line and the normal like so example two a 0 0.3 meter by 0 0.3 square coil rotates uh, in a uniform magnetic field at a frequency of 50 hertz the magnetic field uh, has a density of 1.5 milli teslas the diagram shows the position of the coil at t equals zero uh, seconds so that's at the very start basically uh, complete the graph for at least two rotations of the coil, providing suitable scale for the axes. Okay, so as the diagram shows it right now, is when we're going to have maximum flux going through the coil. So we're going to use the equation to calculate the maximum flux right now. And uh, the angle right now is actually zero degrees. So you get cosine, that's going to equal one. That's the maximum value cosine can take. So the maximum flux uh, we can have is B times A. We've, we've got B. So that's 1.5 milliteslas. Okay, so I'm going to turn that into teslas times area, which is 0 0.3 by 0 0.3. Okay, so that gives us the maximum flux. And we can label that at the very start like so, because we're going to start with that maximum flux. And then as we rotate it, so watch the diagram. As I spin it, the flux rate is decreasing. So I can show it decreasing like so. And as it continues to spin, the flux continues to decrease. 
Okay, eventually when it's like this, the flux linkage, uh, flux to the coil is going to be zero because there's nothing going through that area. Okay, and then as we start to spin the other way, it's actually going to become negative because now the flux is coming in through the other side. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. Is it, There is flux going through it, but it's negative. Okay, and then again, now I've got maximum flux, but now it's on the negative side like this. So if we just maintain this pattern, so you've got negative flux on the axes here as well. Uh, if, you can see it's a cosine graph like so. Okay, so now we can give it time scale as well. So because we've given the frequency, 50 hertz, we can find the time period, uh, the time it takes to do one rotation. So 1 over frequency equals time period. So 1 over 50, uh, that's 0 0.02 seconds. So we can label that there and 0 0.04 seconds for two complete rotations. The final example, the graph shows a variation of magnetic flux linkage through a rotating coil. Give the equation for the magnetic flux linkage for this specific coil as a function of time. So we're going to use this equation for magnetic flux linkage, but we're going to give it for this particular coil here. So let's start off with the coefficient, or basically the BA and the thing that multiplies the cosine. So that you can just read from the graph. Okay, so that's the maximum value. So that's over there. So that's going to be 8 times the power minus 3, like so. Okay, so we don't know what the flux sensitive area is or number of turns is, but it's okay because we don't need it because we can just read from the graph. Cosine theta. Okay, so what we're going to put inside instead of theta. So as it's rotating coil, instead of theta, you can actually write omega times time. Um, omega is measured in radians per second, and time is in seconds. So actually, omega times time, uh, angular frequency times time, is equal to angle in radians. Okay, so that's why I'm using this here. And that, from the circular motion topic, hopefully you know, is equal to 2 pi over t. So it's the angular frequency, sometimes referred to as angular speed or velocity. So 2 pi uh, over t, and in this case, uh, the time period is 4 seconds. So we can do that from the graph here. So if I use 2 pi over 4, that gives me 1.57 radians per second. So I'm going to put that there, multiply by the t, which is a variable, which is changing. So if we use this equation and put any time in there, we'll get the magnetic flux linkage going through the coil at that particular point in time.